What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another surprise. one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Chevy Tahoe, courtesy of Apple Chevrolet in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So I wanted to hop in this one today, of course, because it's been completely redesigned for 2021 on the inside and out. Completely new look to this one. And actually it's the first time ever the Tahoe has ever gotten an independent rear suspension, which is a benefit. I'll go over all of that in this video along with everything else, of course. And of course it's larger and more practical. I feel like I can go on and on, but what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so there, of course, are several different trim levels for the 2021 Tahoe, and some of them aren't actually out yet. But for the ones that are currently out, there is the LT, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $55,095. Z71, starting at $60,495. Premier, starting at $63,895. And the High Country, starting at $70,895. And so with all of those trim levels, with the exception of the Z71, power is going to be sent to the rear wheels if you wanted to go with the four-wheel drive system for either of those three simply add three thousand dollars to any of those prices but like i said z71 does come with four-wheel drive but then there is still the ls and the rst trim level that is yet to come so no pricing has been announced for those two trim levels quite yet but so then as you can imagine with all of those different trim levels there are a couple different engine setups for the new tahoe as well first one being a 5.3 liter direct injected v8 belonging to the LT that we have today, the Z71 and the Premier trim levels. This one puts out 355 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 383 pound-feet of torque available at 4,100 RPM, power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10-speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers coming in at 16 in the city, 20 on the highway for the rear-wheel drive configuration, 15 city, 19 on the highway for the four-wheel drive configuration there. And by the way, the fuel requirement for that particular engine setup is is actually regular unleaded fuel, believe it or not. So then the next engine configuration is going to be a 6.2 liter direct injected V8. This one belonging to the high country trim level. And so this particular engine setup puts out 420 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 460 pound feet of torque available at 4,100 RPM. Once again, sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers 15 in the city, 20 on the highway for the rear wheel drive, 14 city, 19 on the highway for the four wheel drive configuration. And with this particular engine setup, premium unleaded fuel is required. So that's gonna be one of the differences, of course, between the two engine configurations there. And there's actually one more that is going to be available. It's not quite there yet at the time of this video, at least, which is going to be a three liter Duramax turbo diesel, 277 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque for that one, but that one's actually gonna be an option. It's gonna be available on the LS, LT, RST, Premier, and High Country, essentially all trim levels but the Z71, really. But so that before we do any kind of acceleration test in the new Tahoe, I did wanna mention there are some drive modes, of course, available. Those drive modes will include normal, sport, off-road, and tow and haul mode, adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, steering sensitivity, and actually, the suspension settings in some particular circumstances. So that's pretty cool as well. I'll go over that in a little bit, but now having mentioned all of that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and try to find a straightaway here and let's do a quick little acceleration. Keep in mind, we do have the 5.3 liter direct injected V8 and let's see how quickly we can get this new Tahoe here up to speed. All right, bit of a rolling start here. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> All right, bit of a slow start, but then once it kicks in, it's a pretty decent acceleration. And of course you do have the 6.2 liter on the high country as well, if you did want a bit more acceleration, but that's certainly not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway or anything like that. It's not the quickest thing in the world because this is a mammoth of an SUV, but still, Having a V8 is definitely necessary, and it does the trick for this new Tahoe here. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important, and so you will, of course, find four-wheel anti-lock disc brakes on the 2021 Tahoe. And as far as that braking feel goes, it's a little bit better maybe than the last generation. I always remember driving the Tahoe in Suburban, the last generation. It had a very soft braking feel, and that definitely still exists here in the new 2021 Tahoe. Maybe it's because it's such a large SUV, 
you, but it is a very soft braking feel, meaning I feel like you gotta press it down a little bit more than some of the other vehicles out there in order to get this beast to stop. So did wanna mention that as far as suspension and handling goes, up front you will get an independent front suspension in the back. And this is really the biggest change in my opinion for 2021 Tahoe independent multi-link rear suspension and so the previous generation tahoe had a solid rear axle and of course when you switch it up and go to the independent multi-link rear suspension that not only is going to give you better handling but it is going to give you a smoother ride as well so i'm super happy that chevy went with the independent rear suspension on this new tahoe but they didn't stop there actually there is an optional magnetic ride control suspension so what that does is it monitors each shock absorber individually not only soaking up the road's imperfections but also tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering giving you better handling as well so that is definitely a suspension i always like to recommend and again that is optional for the new 2021 tahoe but once again chevy went above and beyond even at that offering an air suspension for this new tahoe as well and that is something you typically see on bmw on mercedes-benz manufacturers like that so i love that it's there on the tahoe now and when you have those two options of course you're going to get an incredibly smooth ride the very smoothest ride you could possibly get really and with that air suspension it actually allows movement up to four inches so that's a pretty decent amount for an air suspension as well so then ultimately when you put all of that together when it comes to ride quality i do notice a difference between this generation and the last one i'll start by saying that it's definitely a smoother ride and that is due in part because of the independent rear suspension but having said that i do have the lt trim level today so i don't even have the magnetic ride control and i don't have the air suspension either and still it is a very comfortable ride so i'll give chevy that it does have a very nice nice ride quality to it. As far as the steering feel goes, it's pretty much as expected. It's right on point. I certainly don't have any issues with the steering feel. Not the heaviest in the world, but definitely not on the loose side either. It's quite honestly just perfect for the Tahoe. As far as cabin noise goes, that's pretty darn good as well. I gotta say it's a lot quieter than a lot of the three row SUVs I test out. So love the cabin noise or lack thereof, I should say. And when it comes to visibility, I all right if you have third row passengers and this third row headrests are up dang they are beefy they essentially go all the way up to the roof really so that is going to hinder visibility ever so slightly let's say that but if that third row was not in use you can always just fold that down and those third row headrests are going to be out of the way the second row headrests are perfectly fine i don't have any issues there but the third row headrests they're mammoth they go right up to the ceiling so they're going to hinder visibility ever so slightly there rain sensing windshield wipers though come standard across the board every single trim level so absolutely love that essentially what that is is when the tahoe detects any kind of mist or rainfall it is going to turn on those windshield wipers automatically so it's just one last thing you got to worry about there kind of like automatic headlights also a head-up display is going to come standard on the high country it is going to be optional for the premiere and that is going to project your speed speed limit safety information up on the windshield better helping you keep your eyes on the road a little better and one of the best things about visibility though on this one the hood creases i do not remember seeing that in the previous generation the hood is definitely redesigned here on the new 2021 tahoe and it is for the better i just like that it looks cool up there but having mentioned that that is about it for the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new redesigned 2021 chevy tahoe all right so now here she is you guys the new 2021 chevy tahoe completely redesigned for the 2021 model year of course and it looks strikingly similar to the new silverado as well i think we all could see that a little bit ground clearance i wanted to start with that it is going to range dependent upon what suspension setup that you go with standard configuration is eight inches of ground clearance up front however if you were to go with the air suspension for the tahoe that does bump that up to a maximum of 10 inches of ground clearance in case anybody was curious there but go ahead and take a look at the headlights led headlights do come standard across the board for every Every single trim level of course they do come with the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they will turn on automatically for you there LED daytime running lights also coming with that as well when it comes to that front grille of course it is going to differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with for example if you go with let's say the high country you're going to get a lot more chrome up there along with the gold bow tie emblem however if you were to go with that z71 trim level you are going to get a black mesh front grille with z71 badging within the front grille and some black Black emblems and also some skid plates and some red front tow hooks as well so kind of the off-road package if you will for that one but making our way now to the side rear privacy glass does come standard across the board black assist steps 
also standard across the board and that's something that's kind of needed on the Tahoe I will say the Tahoe does sit up pretty high so side steps definitely come in handy even for me I gotta be honest but roof rails coming standard across the board as well body colored door handles coming standard along with body colored power adjustable side mirrors and heated side mirrors as well also coming standard I did want to mention though you will actually get auto dimming side mirrors that's a feature you don't usually see that often quite honestly but that's going to come on the premier and high country trim levels only in case you wanted that tahoe lettering can be found in the front doors of course in typical chevy fashion there chrome belt line molding for all trims but the z71 because of course that z71 is going to give you black belt line molding as expected there then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch aluminum alloys with the lt trim level however i will say we do have an optional wheel setup here today so you are actually looking at 20 inch alloys but nonetheless z71 does bump that up to 20 inch machined aluminum alloys premier trim level gives you 20 inch polished aluminum alloys and of course the high country bumps that up once again to 22 inch sterling silver painted alloys so plenty of wheel options even at that there's still plenty of wheel options available for each trim level not even including the ones i just named so really when it comes to the wheel setup you have plenty of options there but now making our way to the back of the tahoe rear spoiler with an integrated brake light coming standard the cool thing about the tahoe and the suburban something they've always done is they tuck that rear window wiper up under the rear spoiler so i always like that setup it kind of assists with visibility as well you don't have to look around the rear window wiper when you're looking out the back so that's pretty cool but that's going to be back there too tahoe lettering spelled out horizontally on the rear lift gate there black bow tie emblem of course on the z71 trim level only otherwise you're going to have that gold emblem back there led taillights actually coming standard across the board that's a big one for the tahoe and just below it all a single exhaust outlet with the lt and the z71 trim levels however very cool exhaust setup for the premier and high country you're going to get a dual exhaust with quad tips but of course it's not the one we have today so you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip And so but now since we are round back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate it is a power rear lift gate for all trim levels you of course can open it up a few different ways there is the button on the key fob of course also a button on the lift gate itself and actually it is a hands-free power lift gate as well for all trim levels so even if your hands are full that is going to open up when you get close enough there but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 25.5 cubic feet behind that third row and i will say if that was not enough space of course that third row does fold down and by the way very easy to fold down that third row especially on the lt trim level that we have today we'll say that third row is power folding for the premier and high country but honestly you really don't need it it was super simple to fold down there but nonetheless once folded down car capacity bumps up to 72.6 cubic feet behind that second row and with all rows folded 122.9 cubic feet this is substantial reason being is that the 2020 tahoe only came in at 94.7 cubic feet with all rows folded so very substantial bit more than the previous generation Tahoe. So that's very impressive, quite honestly. And really enough for you to sleep in for reference. I'm an even six feet tall, so even I was able to fit back there. So you could definitely actually sleep in the Tahoe. That's pretty cool. In-floor storage also coming standard across the board. It wasn't very deep, but it is still in-floor storage there for you. Tie-down anchors can also be found in that cargo area. There's also an outlet so you can charge up your tools back there if you wanted to. There's some grocery hooks back in that cargo area as well well so really everything you could possibly want but so then making our way up to the rear seats rear legroom for that third row comes in at 34.9 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall and let me tell you guys i could actually fit even without moving up the second row which by the way you can move up that second row if you did have third row passengers to make it even more so that's pretty cool but i did want to mention in addition to that rear ventilation does come standard on the roof of the tahoe that comes for all three rows of course 
course. You will find some cup holders in that third row. There's also some seat belt holders back there. If the seats were not in use to kind of tuck those seat belts away, I found that pretty convenient. And let me tell you guys, it was pretty darn easy to get into that third row. That second row seating folds up so incredibly easy. There's almost no lifting whatsoever. It's like on a hydraulic system. So very easy to get in the third row. But speaking of that second row, second row legroom comes in at 42 inches even. Again, for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Again, with the ventilation, tri-zone climate control actually comes standard on the Tahoe. So the rear passengers can set their own temperatures if they wanted to. Heated second row seats come standard on the Premier and High Country. And they are actually optional on the Z71 and LT trims if you wanted them. You do have some phone charging ports back there. Once again, also an outlet to charge up some tools if you wanted to. LED interior lighting. I loved that. That also comes standard across the board. So much better than halogen lighting. So I love that the LEDs are there. Rear seat media packages available. That's where you're going to have those tablet style screens affixated on the back of the front seats there. Love that there was grab handles to get into that second and third rows because like I said, the Tahoe does sit up a little bit higher than most other SUVs out there. But overall seating was plenty comfortable for me. But now making your way up to the front seats, leather surfaces do come standard across the board, every single trim level there. Also heated front seats for all trim levels. Heated and ventilated seats come with the Premier and High Country. 10-way power driver seat and passenger seat comes with the LT and Z71, love that. However, 12-way power adjustable front seats come with the Premier and High Country. And once again, seating was plenty comfortable for me up there. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped across the board, power adjustable for the Premier and High Country trim levels. Then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Chevy logo on the one side end. When you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch. And of course, the circular button is actually your remote start, which comes standard across the board. Love that. But if you didn't want to use that, of course, it does come with a push button and start as well so all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there and so but then once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right fuel information and some temperatures are going to be found up top there is a small digital display front and center towards the bottom there to control what is on that digital display there are steering wheel mounted controls but to elaborate on what is on that digital display there's things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your oil life remaining and it gives you a percentage read out of that there's tire pressure for each individual tire some safety information there's a digital speedometer you could choose to display up there if you wanted to or really everything you would possibly need quite honestly that touching on overall interior quality, panoramic power sunroof is going to be optional for all trim levels. However, it does not come standard on any particular trim level. Universal home remote, all trim levels come standard with that. That's pretty cool. That's the buttons for your garage door openers for up to three different garage doors. Wireless phone charger coming standard for all trim levels as well. And so at this point in a lot of videos, I mentioned an overhead sunglass holder, but in the new Tahoe, this is so much cooler. So just to the left, upper left, I would say, I guess, of the passenger side glove box there is a secret compartment where you put your sunglasses or really probably anything but it's kind of a secret compartment just to the right of the navigation screen there where you're going to put your sunglasses that is pretty cool. I absolutely love that. I love secret compartments and this is one of those. So I did want to mention that. Also another thing I don't think I mentioned yet to actually put the new Tahoe in drive or reverse or neutral or whatever, there's actually buttons located to the left of the infotainment screen. So rather than any kind of traditional shifter, you simply just either pull back on the reverse or drive buttons or press in the park button. So it's a little bit different than a lot of other vehicles out there. So did want to mention that to you guys as well. But see, and another thing I kind of liked is just on both sides of the center console there, there was a little extra storage. You usually don't find that in SUV, so that was pretty cool. Also, just underneath the climate control buttons, there is a 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, a phone charging port, and of course, your wireless phone charger as well. Just behind that, you will find dual cup holders. And just behind that, of course, your center armrest with yet another USB charging port, phone charging port, and there is a removable tray within that center armrest as well. And in very deep storage area, so absolute ton of space within that center armrest. Did want to also mention on the doors, there's three different compartments. Most SUVs come with an upper compartment and a lower compartment, but the Tahoe actually has a center or middle compartment 
as well. So that was kind of unique too. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display in the new Tahoe here. 10.2 inch colored touchscreen display does come standard across the board, every single trim level. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard. Wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay also standard across the board. So as of right now, wireless Android Auto is something brand new. So a lot of vehicles are just coming out with that for the 2021 model years. Previously, of course, you had to hook your phone up via USB cable constantly to the vehicle, but I love that it's wireless now, it's pretty convenient. Factory navigation system if you wanted it, although you don't need it, comes with the Premier and High Country trim levels. Climate control settings can be found up there, radio information of course, and the sound system is actually pretty darn good on the new Tahoe as well. For example, even the base LT trim level and the Z71 come with a Bose nine speaker sound system. However, if you were to go with the Premier High Country, that just bumps that up to a Bose 10 speaker sound system. So. Having said that, I love that it's by Bose, and I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. And so, but then last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the new Tahoe in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board. However, if you were to go with the high country, you will find a surround view monitor as well, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system, hill start assist, but also some of the advanced safety features that come standard across the board, automatic emergency braking, following distance indicator, forward collision alert, front pedestrian braking and rear parking sensors as well. And then if you were to go with the Premier High Country trim levels, that is also going to add lane departure alert with side blind zone alert, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, and front and rear parking sensors as well. So all in all, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2021 Tahoe, the LT trim level that I had today actually is a pretty darn good value considering the new larger size of the Tahoe and what you're actually getting also on the Tahoe. So honestly, LT trim level is kind of in my mind at least where it's at. Of course, if you wanted to upgrade, there's no problems there. Of course, you can get plenty more, but really the LT trim level gives you a good bit on this one. Wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay also is an amazing thing. Very good road trip vehicle, again, mostly because of its size, but really three rows comfortably on this one, so that's pretty darn cool. As far as constructive criticism goes, because I, of course, always have some, the braking feel is, of course, a little bit too soft for me still. It has been in previous generations. That didn't, unfortunately, get changed for this one, so it is still a very soft braking feel. Blind spot monitoring system should kind of come standard on this one if you're asking me, because it is a larger vehicle. So that is one advanced safety feature I would have loved to have seen come standard on the new Tahoe as it does on a lot of other three row SUVs. So that would have been pretty cool. But all in all, again, it comes back to being a very solid value at this price point even for the size of the Tahoe and what it is. So actually a very big fan of the new Tahoe here. But let me know what you guys think of the new Tahoe in the comment section below. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's all